put a five-man in midfield. That's what he'll try to do tonight. They are quite literally the Lone Rangers because they're the only team coming out to fireworks, to candles of their own, Bristol City. They're coming out a little earlier because we've got a delayed kickoff, as Gary Johnson was explaining. Yes, good evening, everybody. The next instalment in the ever-changing story at the top of the championship. Bristol City keep the side which beat Scunthorpe last week. Captain Lewis Carey still out injured. The manager's son, Lee Johnson, passed a test on a back injury today. Right back Bradley Orr has scored in the last two games. Deli Adebola and Australian Nick Carl have been brought in to add to the attacking options, and Adebola scored on his home debut. Well, Crystal Palace suffered a power cut of their own recently. They make four changes tonight, some surprising ones too. Top scorer Clinton Morrison and strike partner Jamie Scowcroft are dropped to the bench. Youngster Sean Scammell is also left out, and Neil Dans pulled out with a groin injury this morning. There are recalls for Tom Soares, Carl Fletcher, the fit again Clint Hill, and Chef Ikuchi getting only his second Palace start of the season. It's expected to be a 4-5-1 formation. Well, a million pound signing Lee Trundle can't get in the Bristol City side at the moment. He's among the substitutes tonight and top scorer Darren Byfield too. Scowcroft and Morrison are options from the bench tonight for Palace. And as the boys have been saying, they've surprised absolutely everybody this season by being right up there all the way in this promotion race. Palace, no wins in their last four after that 15-game unbeaten run. This worked straight away for the stand-in captain, Akum, as he gets that one away. Neil Warnock will have worked long and hard with these players over the last nine days, trying to get a tune again from them. That was played towards Kuchi. And he could do with a goal, by the way. The man selected to play out front tonight. He hasn't scored for ten months. Big atmosphere around the city in the build-up to this game. It was the front and back page lead story in the evening paper tonight, I noticed. Well, the city's on fire, isn't it? Bristol Rovers doing so well. The rugby team winning. Fantastic for the area. Bristol Rovers drawn at home today in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup against West Bromwich Albion. They might fancy themselves. Both the Bristol clubs were promoted last season. So Bristol City are looking for successive promotions. She again was the target. And the thing with Kuji is playing up front, you have to get players around him. But he's got McComb against him, who's very dominant in the air. So Carl. Breaking onto this one, taking advantage of a mistake and a fine save by Speroni, who had to get down quickly. Shows the danger of Carl. Just breaks from deep, anticipates, stays on his feet well. Just the outside of the left foot. Gets down well, Speroni. He's just going wide, but didn't know that. Clever player, Carl, who's given Bristol City a slightly new dimension. I think that was on its way in as well, you know. Here's the corner around dangerously in there and Palace in the shape of Fletcher get it away in the end but Bristol City a plus one in their goal difference and West Brom have scored nearly 30 more goals than them this season and they could go top here you know what a great job they've done considering those sort of stats interesting idea by Adebola he nearly managed to find McIndoe Adebola of course playing against one of his old clubs he's got a few of those mine Is the crossing at it, Bowler with the header, he couldn't quite get enough beef onto it. Well, that's the sort of service he thrives on. Bit sloppy defending there by Palace from the throw in, attacks the near post. I think he could have dominated a little bit clever. He loses it for a second, you've got a problem. He's giving all sorts of little movements there. He's not happy, but it wouldn't be the first time. Adebola with a flick on, and he's just hoping that one of those wingers 
Mackendo or Sproul can just pick up the second ball. You're right, Carl is having to play a long way away from Adebola, isn't he, at the moment? He's been marginalised. He's desperately trying to get space, no matter where it is on the pitch, and at the moment, Fletcher is not giving him any space. McAllister again. Sveroni looking commanding as he should have done really because it was right down his throat. And Gary Johnson not happy at all, flailing arms all over the place, not happy with the quality he's seeing from his players in wide areas. Apart from the save low down from Carl early in the first half, Sveroni's not a great deal to do. That's half time. Crystal Palace very, very resilient. Lots of possession for Gary Johnson's Bristol City side. But with their playmaker, Nick Carl, being man-marked all the time by Carl Fletcher, very few signs of a breakthrough on a tense night at Ashton Gate. It's goalless at half-time. Bordek organises his side well, he handpicks his players, and the work rate and the work ethic is particularly good when you see one of his teams out there. Bristol City in their red shirts, starting the second half, attacking the... End of the John Attio stad, a famous old goal scorer and England international. Got over 300 league goals for Bristol City. The Palace will fancy themselves strongly. If they could just nick one and have three points to defend, that would suit them down to the ground, of course. And the header, brilliant save from Basso there. And fired in again by Watson across the face of goal. But Palace nearly got the goal they were looking for. It was a brilliant save from the Brazilian keeper. Well, here's the header coming in. Was he beating the goalkeeper? He looks like he's got a hand there. It's a decent enough header. It's a good height. There's Basso going across, and he didn't get near it. That is terrific defending. On. You know their experience. They can do the job for you. on the header again Watson can he get on the end of this Lee Hills has scored for Crystal Palace the 17 year old with the goal a vital one too you'd think Bristol City are complaining but the goal stands well they're complaining there was a handball thrown in there don't take anything away from this strike magnificent technique here's the ball flicked on by Kuchi again and this is where they're talking about, but it was kicked against him. He couldn't get out of the way there. But look at that for technique. He steadies himself. There's the bullet. Definitely hits his hand. But could he get out of the way? It's played on here. And look at this for a finish. Steadies himself, concentrates, and doesn't overpower it. Just directs it towards a goal. And that was a different class strike. That was superb. A first senior goal for the teenager. He'll remember that as long as he lives. There's a great strike as well. A hint of handball, which will add to the controversy, no doubt, in the build-up. But it's a real shaker for Bristol City, this. Uh, you have to pay compliments to Neil Warnock's team. They have started brighter. They've been more adventurous. And again, Coochie's played his part up there. Long throw, flick off, and the shout for handball, definitely hit his hand. In that area, when it does that, you think, well, the referee might give the benefit of the doubt to the defenders. Didn't do it. It's the travelling Palace fans who are making the noise at Ashton Gate at the moment. Take nothing away from that strike, it was just the way he steadied himself. Okay. No way through for Carl, who's been policed heavily all night by Carl Fletcher, whose selection seems to have been solely with that job in mind. The magnificent, isn't he? Never stopped, never left his side. And Crystal City looked to him to get the ball to his feet to make things happen. Just hasn't been able to do that. What does Gary Johnson do about this? He has Darren Byfield and Lee Trundle in reserve and it would be a surprise if they were not used fairly soon in fact discussions already going on to that end as all plays this one forward McCoon won the header oh and the chance of an equaliser is wasted by Sproul right in front of goal well give Sproul credit here 
he thought he scored there, Sproul, and I'm sure the Bristol City fans did as well. I think he should have done. You've got to come and break us down. Mackindo. Johnson towards the back post, and Ebola's in there. Great defending there. Matt Lawrence. That outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Good movement here from Bristol City. Thought he took one touch too many, but look at this. Thought Byfield had got a free header. Lawrence is having none of it. A vital interception by the experienced defender. Still not away by Palace. And they're going to get a free kick there. Miss Portuguese side Benfica. They're not there yet, Crystal Palace. Crystal City just need one moment. Can they scramble an equaliser? Every point's going to count. Of course, it's gone a long way here. Penalty is given. The referee points straight to the spot. Well, he's, he's indicating the referee oh. that somebody pulled somebody back. The Palace are incensed. It wasn't immediately clear what that was given for, but the referee was in no doubt. Well, there it's played in, and still it looks confusing. Ball's decent, it's difficult to defend. Bounces there. See, it's still so difficult to see there. The crowd goes straight up behind the goal. The referee was outside the box when he gave it. Hudson's going to get a booking. Bradley Orr. He's going to take the penalty. He scored in Bristol City's last two games. Can he save a point late on here? Controversial award. Bristol City don't care. It's or He hasn't done it. He gets another chance. Smaroni scrambled around. How does he stay out? Two fantastic saves by the Argentine goalkeeper. What a hero. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is not a good penalty, but this save is terrific. He responds so well, and that defending after that for the block was terrific as well. Trundle had a chance with the header when it came out again. Here's the corner kick. What a finish here at Ashton Gate. McAllister. Crystal City throwing everybody forward. The brakes on here. Scannell. Wonderful chance here for Lee Hills again. He takes it back to Scannell, the two 17-year-olds combining brilliantly. Well, that should have been it. The ball from Scannell wasn't good. Left it behind Hill. Well, he's going to remember this, isn't he? Julian Speroni, what a save that was twice over. The second one was terrific. First one, it wasn't a good penalty. I think the pressure of the occasion got to war a little bit, but the reaction after that to get back up and scramble across and block it was sensational. Trundle. Bristol City are running out of time. And ideas. McIndoe. And there is Lawrence again. We're still trying to work out what exactly the penalty was given for. Well, the crowd went straight up behind the goal. Byfield had a look round, but still difficult to see exactly what happened. And Palace were incensed by it. We've had about four looks at it, too. Well, he's got a big lump of mud on his nose, but he won't mind that. It's not a good pen, but look at this. He should have scored. He's smashed it straight back down the middle. And... They thought it was going to be the equaliser, and it wasn't. He won't want to look at that again, will he? Back on his mobile phone later, that yeah. Bristol City fan. Bradley, or I'm wondering how he missed the rebound, because it was an open goal, virtually. I think he thought it was just a comfortable tap-in. Absolutely delighted Hudson with his goalkeeper. Hills, anywhere or two for Palace now. They're nearly there. But this is the man who looks to have secured 
what would be a very, very, very big win for Neil Warnock's side. Well, there have been some sterling performances from quite a few Palace players out there. Fletcher, Hudson, but Spironi, I think he's been at the top of his game all evening. And Byfield gets the free kick for that. I think the Palace players rather thought that Byfield was looking for that, but he's got it anyway, and it's a dangerous situation as well. This is another chance for Bristol City. Spironi might have more work to do yet. Well, can the boss's son do it for his dad here? With the clock showing over 90 minutes. It is Lee Johnson. Oh, it was a firecracker. And it dipped over and it took a deflection on the way. Certainly did. It's a decent strike. There's the deflection. Nearly confuses Speroni. Four minutes left to get something out of it. Dramatic finale here. Bristol City. Speroni goes for the punch. He punched it downwards, though. And Palace get a free kick and the pressure's off. Well, I'll tell you what, the reaction from the bench when that penalty was saved was unbelievable. Looked straight down at Neil Warnock. He was going absolutely berserk. Applauding, jumping up in the air, and rightly so. He knows how hard his team's at to work here this evening. But that man must be wondering how he failed to at least put the rebound in. Hero last week at Scunthorpe. And tonight he'll really be kicking himself. You know, might have missed a chance to go top, but they're still in there fighting without a chance, without sure. a doubt, sorry. And I think it is going to go all the way, isn't it, this, this battle? But it's a setback you certainly don't want at home. And Ebola flicks this one on again, Trundle's here! Blocked once more by Hudson, they want another penalty as Trundle goes down, hopefully. Ref's not interested this time. It's almost a Bristol City siege late on in front of the Atio stand. Flicked away by Skunar Palace, hanging on by their fingertips, defending deep. McAllister plays it in there. Trundle, no way through. Byfield is denied as well. Look at the congestion in there. It's impossible to get the ball through. Here comes another one and another attempted header on goal. Goal kick. Huge sigh of relief there from Crystal Palace. It's four minutes of added time. Remember that we're playing here, a minimum of, as they say. I'm sure all the teams just outside the playoffs will be happy with this result. Palace on the verge of going up to seventh place. They haven't won at Ashton Gate since 1980 when Terry Venables was the manager. Not that these two sides have been in the same division too often in the intervening years. Just hope the fans don't get on the backs of the Bristol City players when the final whistle goes if they do lose the game. They don't deserve it. Or plays it forward, but has Bristol City's last chance really gone? Or have they got one final attempt left? This has to be virtually the last attack, you'd think, wouldn't you? Looking at the clock. Free kick. Watson's given that away. He'll kick himself for that, really, because it gives Bristol City a chance 
to pile the ball in there one last time. This has to be it, Gary. It certainly does. The goal. Just concentrate on the quality here. It's a silly foul to give away again. Just stay on your feet. Taken quickly. Trundle on the turn. <laughs> Claiming handball, hopefully. It's a corner of Butterfield. And will there be time to take the corner? Because we've already played now. Getting on for half a minute over the four that are going to be added. And they're in the level! Bristol City with virtually the last kick. McCormick, the captain, has got it! Can you believe that? What a finale! Beyond the four minutes of added stoppage time, Jamie McComb heads an equaliser and Palace are denied. Well, that's an if, it stays like this, and it hasn't stayed. They've got the quality right, it's attacked well, and that is a towering, towering header. Takes it well, and this time Spironi has got no chance. Big centre-half comes up, bullet header. And I'm sure Neil Warnock might have something to say about the time played. And the game still hasn't finished. Now, where did he find five and a half minutes from? That's what Neil Warnock will want to know. It is an pertinent inquiry. Bristol City don't care. They've saved the point there, and who knows, when the final maths are done in this division, that could be vital. What a dramatic finale. Spironi looked to have saved the win for Crystal Palace. But it ends here. Bristol City won. Crystal Palace won with the protest going on. in the 95th minute again delayed by 15 minutes because of floodlight failure what a day it would have been for that young man but he was denied by a late late header after heroics from Spironi a double save from a penalty kick magnificent entertainment for you in the Monday Night Live games finished 1-1 at Ashton Gate Neil Warnock He's, he's already told his players not to speak to the ref. He's furious with Spironi. He thought he'd give him a pat on the back after his uh, heroics between the six. But well, that's Neil Warnock for you. Always unpredictable.